Welcome to Taste Buds. I'm Deborah Eckerling, goal strategist, writer, and foodie. And today I'm speaking with Rachel Barnett and Lisa Harvey, authors of Kogels and Collars, stories of food, family, and tradition in Jewish South Carolina. Well, welcome to Taste Buds. So good to meet you both. I'm really excited to learn more about you and your book. But let's start with you. So Rachel, why do you love food? And yeah, let's start with that question. Well, I am, I live in Columbia, South Carolina now. I am the executive director of the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina. We're a statewide organization. So I have this deep interest in South Carolina's Jewish history, as well as food. So this was a natural. I, I made a that just combined beautifully. I grew up in a very small town, the only family, the only Jewish family in this tiny town. My grandfather was a merchant. My father was a merchant. And... Food was important on the table, and it was a rural community. Everything was local and fresh back then. Uh, the Jewish traditions were certainly, we were, you know, my mother grew up in Charleston in a kosher home. So we had this melding of her immigrant mother's recipes, as well as the Southern dishes that came into the home. Um, and, you know, we could have a brisket sitting along fried chicken and okra and tomatoes and collards. I mean, that was the Jewish table, right? So that is my, my interest. My interest is also in the fact as part of the Jewish Historical Society in preserving these memories and sharing these recipes and getting people and families to talk about it. It's a great, day, great way to preserve family history in the state. It is a great way to preserve family history anywhere because right. food is that that such that strong connection lisa same question how did you come to this project and why do you love food well i'm jewish i'm southern so food is my love language <laughs> and i come from a deep family uh of tradition of jewish tradition and I guess Southern traditions, and we, the, these um, two cultural um, um, uh, uh, observances and traditions have come together in uh, bringing food to the table in, in lots of different ways that come together as, as love, you know, for us and for conversation around the table. I'm one, I'm the oldest of five. Um, I'm in actually my, uh, our, um, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina today. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I'm in my, uh, in a beach house that my grandparents built. And this beach house was a kosher beach house. And my grandparents kept kosher and they, um, cooked kosher, but they also were Southern had, uh, they were in Charleston, South Carolina. And so they are surrounded by the fresh produce and the climate, which produced all types of beautiful fish and vegetables, um, the waters surrounding Charleston and our coast. Um, and we have beautiful vegetables. And they were, you know, you didn't go to the grocery store to buy everything. You went to markets and you went to, um, um, you went to butchers, kosher butchers to get your food then. So I come from a rich history of food and Jewish culture and, um, and I live in the South. So all of that just fits really beautifully for the reasons for writing Googles and Collars. It, um, we have many stories. People love to tell food stories. <laughs> and, and most people do not put a healthy and kosher and Southern <laughs> all together in the same sentence. Well, it's, it's, it's possible. Um, uh, we have lots of stories in the book. We have over 60 contributors um, who have uh, gathered favorite memories. Like Rachel and I joke that this book could have been called Chop Liver, Chop Liver and Hala or Fried Chicken and Chop Liver. We've had so many just favorites that people go, go to. Um, and their memories are deep and emotional. It's sensory, you know, it's sensory, which brings things um, alive and emotional. Is that is that the reason you think that people connect 
so much um, of memory and love to food? I do. I mean, if you think about it, there's um, the smell. So if you have a favorite, say, brisket recipe that your grandmother made, the one that you had for all your holiday tables, you know, if you walk into your your mother's house, maybe she's making that recipe. Doesn't that just bring that right back to you? So I think it is very emotional, the sensory. Uh, I have that same experience uh, with a brisket recipe. And my children know that recipe. And yeah. somehow it just, you know, it just brings, floods those memories back. Now, collards um, doesn't That's smell good. as nice as a nice <laughs> Uh, brisket cooking, but Rachel has a wonderful, in our introduction, we, um, we talk about why Kugels and Collards came to South Carolina. And Rachel has a wonderful story and recipe about Collards. And I have a good story about my grandmother's Lakshin Kugel. Okay. Where the name came from. Oh, th yeah. oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. And, and I know when the, when I saw when I first learned about you, that's what really uh, perked my ears up. I'm like, people don't put these things together, which is exactly why you need to put these things together. What do you uh, hope people learn from, from, I know you've got the blog as well, but what is it you want people to know first and foremost about this blending of dishes? Well, a, a lot of people seem to be surprised by the Southern Jewish table. So we, we want to introduce that to a wider audience, and we hope that people get an understanding of that. The other thing I really hope people do, I hope it starts a discussion in their own families to talk about those food memories, and they begin to maybe write those down or, or share them in their own way with their children, with those recipes. We have so many incredible recipes in the book, but I have to tell you, there are so many that are also lost. And some of these, we had to go into the kitchen and, and it was trial and error trying to recreate some of these recipes because they, they, were, they were told they weren't written down, right? It must be terrible to have to like cook and eat things as part of your career. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is actually not our career. So we both have other jobs. I'm a therapist and an artist and a teacher. And Rachel is the executive director of the Jewish Historical Society. But we this has been a labor of love. We're actually not even uh, we're not getting any resources for this book. Uh, the two organizations that have supported us during this process, Historic Columbia of South Carolina and the Jewish Historical Society of South Carolina, um, are where all the proceeds for the book will go. And they do a wonderful job archiving um, Jewish South Carolina. So we're real proud of that. In fact, Deb, this has become an unintentional archive because when you ask people to remember who was around the table, where were you? Where was Passover that summer or that spring, of course? Um, where were you for Hanukkah? Where were the latkes made? You know, the, and, and so it's not only smell, but it's a place and time. So we have an unintentional archive that both of the organizations, frankly, that we um, have worked with are thrilled. And so, um, yeah, we love these stories and we're not finished. There's so many more stories to gather and to um, I, like Rachel said, we hope this will promote more discussion about what is the Southern Jewish table. And so what you're saying is chopped liver and fried chicken is probably the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we're looking at something more about, you know, Jewish brunches and simkas and that um, we kind of end the book um, with a, a younger, it's called Legacy is the last chapter of the book. Rachel, tell a little bit about Legacy. Probably my favorite chapter because it says we must be doing something right. We invited young women, our daughters included, but other young women to write about their food memories. So our food memories come from our mothers, our grandmothers, our immigrant grandmothers. These children 
you know, they're already past that stage of the immigrant grandparent experience, but they write all of them similarly. They talk about food as love and how food on the holidays, the similar recipes. And to me, it was um, so joyous to read these stories. I mean, it really brought tears to my eyes. We have gorgeous stories from all of them and terrific recipes. They are also pushing the envelope. We have a fabulous lox casserole from Allie Rosen uh, Gervich, who lives in New York City, but was raised in Charleston. It is the melding of, of the southern stone ground grits with lox into this luscious casserole that is fabulous for a brunch. Uh, my daughter... <laughs> recreated this uh, tuna noodle casserole. I'm, you're not old enough to remember tuna noodle casserole, Deb, but that was a staple back in the day. My daughter's pescatarian and she's a very healthy foodie and she recreated this recipe. So that's back in there. So we're getting, you know, some interesting recipes from this generation as well, as well as they also want to honor the past. They know some of those recipes as well. Lisa's daughter writes about uh, Rosh Hashanah at their family. And when Lisa's family gets together for Rosh Hashanah, because there are five children in her family and everybody has children and everybody has children. <laughs> and it is like this monster crowd. So the recipes are incredible. And yeah, you know, we've all shared recipes over the years. We found a brownie recipe that my daughter, we claim as her grandmother's. Well, then Lisa and I started talking about it because we call it Mimi's Brownies. Well, Mimi's Brownies actually came from Lisa's mother, who must have shared it with her friend. Best they friend. Were so, yeah. So we had um, we have traced some of these recipes around the uh, with different people. It's interesting. And wow. that recipe that was <laughs> written on the back of an envelope or something we had, yeah. and we found it. And yeah. Bill, what are your earliest food memories? Oh, Lisa, you want to go with that or you want me to? <laughs> so I just wrote a, a blog actually about my father's favorite restaurants. And so when we were young, we did not go out to eat very much at all. But my mother, as a, a mom of five kids, she was pretty regimented. So like on Monday we had, um, you know, Monday we had a certain uh, menu Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I do remember Friday because we would go to my grandmother's and she would make a roasted chicken in the pot. She'd make a kugel and that's the kugel recipe that's in this book. So there must have been something about that. I still have the pot, the chicken pot. And so there must be something about those tastes that come together that's real comfort food. Kugel is, and when we have been asked before to describe what a kugel is, your listeners know what a kugel is. But when we've been asked to describe what a kugel is, we have to kind of tell them it's Eastern European and that it's a comfort food. It could be sweet or savory. Um, we've actually put collars in the kugel and we ha we can send you a recipe about that. <laughs> well, in Jewish food is comfort food and Southern food is comfort food. So it there makes sense to put them together. There you go. Very comforting meal. My first memories are probably, I grew up in a small town, really small town, South Carolina, only Jewish family in this little town. And my father was, his father was a merchant. My father was a merchant and a pharmacist. And um, my memories are having lunch as a kid. It was usually fried chicken and rice and fresh vegetables, always fresh, everything there, because we were, it was a rural community. And, um, you know, you think back on, again, it goes back to taste. I mean, I could taste that. You just don't find that kind of fried chicken, the real, the real deal and real rice. You know, not an instant, right? It's really a rice that is put in the pot that is cooked with fresh vegetables coming into the home. So, yeah. But one of the things that you probably wouldn't, ha wouldn't have in the West Coast, but that you probably have eaten before, are um, preserved or pickled um, fresh vegetables like or in fruits, like pickled watermelon rind or 
um, apricot preserves. Uh, well, that that's not a crop here, but fig preserves. And um, of course, we grow cucumbers out of the wadzu. Um, Rachel, what's what is another one of the recipes? Peaches. Tomato, pe peaches. Sorry, peaches, peaches, not apricots. Yeah, my husband's and family were farmers, Jewish farmers. Okay, we in South Carolina there were quite a few, and they had peach orchards. So lots of peaches. We have good. And his mother's family were in um, the Palmetto pigeon plant business, and they raised pigeons and squab. They grew squab, very delicacy. And uh, there's these businesses. Uh, well, the peach farms aren't no longer there, but Palmetto pigeon plant is still in operation. So it really is a love letter to Southern Jewish food, yes. but also, as you said before, a way to inspire people to share their own memories in reading these memories of others. Mm -hmm. and, and something you mentioned before is you want to like redefine the Southern Jewish table. So what what is on that table? What does that mean to each of you? Well, on that table for me would be uh, brisket, but not any brisket, it has to be the one that I make because that's the one that has been passed down. Um, very good fried chicken that is cooked, not in lard. I mean, you cook it, it's healthy, it's healthier. I'm not going to say it's healthy, healthy, but it's healthier. Um, there is a homemade challah because we have beautiful challah recipes. And um, some of us make challah every week. Uh, then there is a beautiful array of vegetables because I love vegetables. Um in the South, you know, butter beans. And this time of year, we have okra. You can do okra and tomatoes. You can do a succotash or okra. Yeah. Okra. Okay. Yeah. So I would add, yeah, I would add to the table where, where Rachel was going is okra gumbo. And I um, wrote a story about okra gumbo, which is like a succotash of tomatoes, beans, fresh corn, okra, all the, all the vegetables that are grown in the South during the sum, uh, spring and summer harvested now. Um, and the other thing, Rachel, that I would add is my mother's sweet and sour meatballs. They're just, oh, yeah. oh my goodness. I could just, I make them um, with, with patience and care and, um, but I love them. You know, they have a really good taste and they're great on top of rice or I make kasha varnicas. <laughs> And of course, I make a little chopped liver, so we'd have that to be start off with. Um, and I use gribbonese. Um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Chicken schmaltz, chicken fat, which is um, cut up off the off the bone and um, the fat cut off off the bone of the chicken, and fried up with in a little bit of golden liquid, which is. Um, frozen um, chicken schmaltz and uh, put into the chopped liver to make it to have a, a lovely kind of nice texture and taste. So I'd add those things to Rachel's table. One thing I would say about vegetables on a Jewish table, we don't cook with pork, obviously. And in the South, uh, a lot of vegetables in the South are seasoned with fat back with some sort of you know, pork meat. Yeah. But we don't. We've always, uh, I'm, I love the taste of the vegetables. So I have this great collards recipe um, that has no pork whatsoever, of course, and it has a little tomato and some seasonings in it. And it's really delicious. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun hearing both of your histories and the history that you're trying to bring to the forefront for the legacy. I so appreciate your time. Where can people learn more about you, Kugel and Collards and the book, et cetera? You can go to kugelsandcollards.org, and it's totally spelled out, kugels with an S and collards with an S dot O-R-G. And the book is up on Amazon also now for pre-sale. Excellent. Well, thank you again for sharing your love of food and all things Jewish Southern cooking. Um, I feel like I had a an education. And I appreciate that as well. So thank you both. And thank you for tuning in to Taste Buds with Deb. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe on YouTube or your favorite plat subscribe on YouTube and or your favorite podcast platform. And you can go to jewishjournal.com to get recipes and read the articles that go with each episode. And you can learn more at tastebudswithdeb.com. Whatever you, wherever you fall on that scale of love of food, love of cooking. If you're listening to this, you're there, you're somewhere. 
Um, enjoy. Bon appetit.